as we know in biostatistics, everything begins with the data. Let's do a general review of the types of variables that we have seen. The first thing to ask yourself is how is the variable being measured? Is it a measurement that is taken, a lab value, a scan like an x-ray or an MRI or a CT scan? Are you using a ruler or a scale or a clock? Those are objective measures, meaning that regardless of how or who took the measure, you should get a similar or the same identical response. If it is a question that is being answered, that is generally a subjective measure. So if a measure is being taken, that is an objective measure. If an answer is being given, that is generally a subjective measure. How are you feeling today? What is your favorite exercise? Those are examples of subjective questions. There is a middle ground where they are trained observers that are collecting things like reflexes or muscle strength or doing an eye exam. They are trained to give objective measures. So collect your data as specifically as you need. Collect it numerically in an objective way if possible. We have two types of variables that we deal with, categorical and numeric. Remember, categorical is data that is collected in groups. They are collected with categorical levels. They are either ordinal with an order or nominal in name only. You cannot get a mean or numeric value from these groups. So if you think about ordinal, anything that can be put into preferred or accepted order, captured in groups. If the question is, how often do you have trouble walking up the stairs? and the responses are daily, weekly, monthly, or never, these have a hierarchy. Daily is more frequently than weekly, weekly is more frequently than monthly, and monthly is more frequently than it never happens. Remember in situations like this to always collect zero or never separately from the remainder of your categories if you need to split it into a never ever situation. Nominal variables have no inherent order. So if the question is what type of exercise do you prefer, this is simply a preference. This is a question that is answered by a participant in a research study. They could select one or select multiple. And in this case, there is no inherent order. Now, these responses could go with an ordinal variable if the question was what is the highest number of calories burned by these exercises? But in this particular instance, this is simply a nominal response. It's a preference. When you report categorical variables, remember to report both the N and the percent. The percent tells you what percentage of overall is within each category, and the N tells you how much evidence you have. Remember, 20% can come from 2 out of 10 or it can come from 20 out of 100 or 200 out of 1,000. So it is important to report the N and the percent. Percentages go from 0 to 100. Proportions go from 0 to 1. And remember to use at least one decimal place depending upon how specific you need to be. Categorical variables can be broken down into two levels. That's dichotomous, so only two options. The most frequent is yes, no, or ever, never. You can have cumulative responses when there are three or more ordinal responses. For example, if your groups are responding in low, medium, high, with 20, 30, and 50% as shown here, you could report a cumulative percentage with 50% being in the low and medium categories. You would not combine the low and high categories into a single group. When you do cumulative, it is only accumulating levels. You can only take categorical variables and make a numeric variable under very specific circumstances. So why is it that we report the N and the percent? So think about 1,000 people being surveyed about riding roller coasters. 600 men were surveyed and 400 women. 350 men said they liked roller coasters. 257 women said they liked roller coasters. So more men than women, correct? Well, that's a simple assessment based solely on the number. But what we're forgetting here is that more men answered the survey. So we would actually want to compare percentages. And in this case, 
350 out of 600 men is 58.3%, whereas 257 out of 400 women is 64.3% of women report liking roller coasters. So our correct conclusion here is that a higher proportion of women report liking roller coasters. The only time you directly compare the counts or the N is if the number in each category that responded is equal. So if we have 500 women and 500 men here, you could directly compare the number that liked roller coasters, but even then you'd still report the percentages. One of the main reasons is, is that you don't want your reader or the audience to have to do the math. We are accustomed to percentages in life, 50% of this, 25% of that, one third of these. So always report the N and the percent. The percent allows you to compare groups that come from different overall sample sizes. And the end tells you how much evidence you have. Do you only have two responses, 200 or 2000 responses? So categorical variables that are collected in groups can often not be made into numerical responses, which are continuous measures. These are collected as a number, not a group of numbers. So if you think about the question, how many days a week did you exercise for at least 30 minutes, there are eight possible responses here, one through seven and zero. You could have them check a box here, but if all the boxes are individual, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, this is a continuous response. Or you could simply have people write in the number of days. How long does it take someone to walk 25 feet? This you would use a stopwatch. Mark out 25 feet, press start, and then stop when they cross the 25 foot threshold. This is a continuous numeric response. You can also collect dates and create number of days or number of months from dates. So days hospitalized, you would have an admission date and you would have a discharge date. And from that, you can determine the number of days someone was in the hospital. How do you know? The biggest or easiest way to tell if you have a numeric or categorical variable is to ask yourself, can I get a mean response from this data? Remember, a mean is taking each observation, summing it up, and dividing by the total number of observations. It's the average. If we collected the days last week that you exercised in four categories, zero, one or two days, three or four days, five or more days, this is not numeric. You cannot get a mean value from these answer options. This is ordinal categorical. However, if you collected it in the box on the right side as the number of days in a week and allow your respondent to either select 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, or they write in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, you can naturally get a mean number of response from this collection. This is numeric. Let's take a look at one more example. If you consider the body mass index, if you consider BMI or body mass index, there are four levels of BMI when it's reported as underweight, normal weight, overweight, or obese. This is considered an ordinal variable. Underweight weighs less than normal weight or has lower BMI. Normal has lower than overweight. Overweight has lower than obese, or conversely, obese has the highest BMI all the way down to underweight. You can report the N in percent of each level. You can report the mode, which would be the most common level reported. And you can report cumulative percent. You could say X percentage are under or normal weight or X percent are obese versus not obese. You can also capture the height and weight of each respondent. And from that, use the formula to calculate the BMI. This is a numeric value. You can report a mean and standard deviation body mass index. If the data is skewed, you could report a median and IQR or a median and range. You could also report the mode, but for continuous variables that can be tricky, you may not have an obvious most common response. However, if you collect it with the height and weight, you can get the BMI category from the BMI number. So this is a very good example of why you should capture data as a continuous measure, because you can always make it categorical later. If you simply captured the category of BMI, you would not be able to uncategorize that into heights, weights, and the BMI value. When you report numeric variables, again, look at the shape of your data. 
do a univariate distribution, so just on that variable, and look to see if it is symmetric. Is there a peak to your data with equal amounts of data to the left and right of the center? That is symmetric data and a mean and standard deviation are often appropriate. If the data is skewed, that means that the data lists more to one side or the other, then you would report a median and a minimum and maximum or a median and IQR, or the 25th and 75th percentiles. You could also report the mode or the most common response if your data lends itself to that. So reporting the number of days per week that people exercise, a mode would be useful there. Reporting the mode on weight is probably not useful. You can also put numeric values back into categories very commonly for the days of exercise per week. You would often report the percentage of people that reported zero days per week but then also report the mean and standard deviation of the number of days per week. When looking at continuous and categorical variables, remember, numeric is best when possible. You can get a mean or median. You can group later if needed. You have categorical when there is no numeric response or that level of specificity is not needed. You'll report the N in percent or you could report cumulative if it is ordinal. You often cannot convert categorical variables back to a numeric variable unless it was specifically collected in that way. So ask yourself when looking at data, is it objective or subjective? Is it categorical or is it numeric? Can I get a mean from it? If it is categorical, is it ordinal or nominal? As practice for this summary type of data. Look at the ComBRX subset data. This is data that asks people with multiple sclerosis if they had ever had specific types of infections in their past. It also contains demographic information. Looking at the worksheet, there are two parts. There is a table and then there are two subsequent questions. Begin with a univariate description of the data. That is, go into your software and look at each variable individually and determine what type of variable it is and what's the most appropriate type of summary. Then there's also a bivariate summary that asks you to fit a Y by X and give summary data by two groups.